Uh, ten years ago, um, having been the Education Secretary who, in, who created the National Curriculum and Academies, I decided there was another great change needed, and that was the creation of technical schools in our country. In 1945, we had 300 technical schools, but they were all killed because of snobbery. Everybody wanted to be the school on the hill, like the grammar school, not the one down in the town in shabby premises, dirty jobs, greasy rags. It was a massive mistake, which Germany did not make. Germany adopted broadly education since 1945, and this is why they are such a dynamic engineering-based economy. Uh, and as a result, the skills gap today is absolutely enormous. It is so enormous that the government has stopped publishing the figures on it and they abolished the body that did publish the figures on it. And so one of the education charges I'm chairman for the last year has been publishing as a, a, what they consider the skill we get to be, but they have a huge committee of people from the public and the private sector and the university world, uh, and they published four reports. And their first report on engineering showed a shortfall of 203,000 vacancies in engineering. Then it went on to the digital economies and the, the dramatic gap of 600,000. And they did the creative industries, the artistic world, the media world, and all the technicians and actor performers as well. And they reckon themselves they're going to be 200,000 short by the end of next year. And the fourth one they did was hospitality. Well, as you know, if you go to a London hotel, about the only person who speaks English is the doorman. Uh, and again, the gap in hospitality is enormous, over 200,000 hospitality and, and catering and all of that. And the government has not recognised this, quite frankly, and is going to be much worse after uh, Brexit. And so, ten years ago, I developed the concept of what's called a university technical college. Uh, and these colleges, and we've got 48 of them, are very, very different from an ordinary school. It is, to begin with, 14 to 18. We're stuck at almost the last country in the world that changes children to 11. More and more abandoning 11 as an age of transfer, 11 is only be in our system because it was once the school leaving age and uh, everybody went to 11 and, went and, and left, most left. Um, and most other countries in Europe is moving to what's called upper and lower secondary at 14 where you have much more specialist training and education post 14. And so our colleges are 14 to 18. Um, they have a working day from 9 till 5 every day. The governing body is composed of local employers in the university which is very unusual for a school. They're all in educational charities. They're all state schools. They're free. Anybody can apply. Um, and it's been quite a struggle to get them established because Michael Gove imposed uh, a curriculum on the schools, uh, which I think has been devastating in its, in its harm. It has excluded all technical education from pre-16 education. And as a result, not only, not only technical education has been squeezed out of schools, and I went to a grammar school in 1945, and the only lesson I can remember was the two hours of carpentry that we had. All that's gone years ago. Um, <coughs> not only that, but all the cultural subjects are also being squeezed out of schools. It's a disastrous curriculum. Um, and we're fighting against that. He, he didn't like us as education secretary. He tried to stop us, got our money, but I had the support of Cameron and Osborne, and so we got going. And we've now got 48. We've got about four, over 14,000 students. We'll have well over 15,000 later this year. Um, what they do, when they arrive at 14, the curriculum is 40% uh, of the time is, is spent making and designing things with their hands, 60% academic. When they get to 16, it's the other way around. 60% is practical work, 40% academic. Uh, and they tend to specialize in only two specialisms. Usually engineering, but not necessarily. Nearly all of them do digital. Uh, some do healthcare. Uh, there's one in the northeast of London, a very successful one, uh, which is doing healthcare and also the world of entertainment in, in London. Um, and we produce, therefore, a high quality students at 1680. We are one of the biggest producers of apprentices, basically. Now, we produce a lot of apprentices. A normal school produces about 6% apprentices. We produce 30% apprentices in average. We have some that produce much more, 50%. One last year, the one at Sellafield, was just won an outstanding judgment from Ofsted. 80% were apprentices at Sellafield, and 20% went into university and nuclear engineering. So normally we have 30% going into apprenticeships and 47% going to universities to do STEM courses. They invariably do STEM courses. Um, and that is, and, and so 
that is double the national average. The national average going to STEM is, 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 is half what we produce of our 47%. Um, and so um, we have used SpringPod in all of this uh, to help. Um, now, as local companies in our colleges have to first determine the specialist curriculum, and then they have to come in and produce projects for the companies. For example, Rolls-Royce has comes in and gives lessons on making piston pumps for eight weeks. Network Rail comes in and has a lesson on eight weeks on level crossing gates. And uh, Fermin Reading was a design company that designed Reading Station, and they gave the Reading UCT the task of designing the station better. So they came and taught them how to do architect architectural CAD to do that, had a competition about it. So our youngsters are very practically based people. And we want to ensure that by 16 or 18, they have the following skills. They've worked in teams, which is not in normal schools. You don't work in teams in a normal school. Secondly, they made things with their hands, not done in a normal school. They've designed things on computers in a very professional way, hardly done in normal schools. They've engaged in problem solving. These are the sorts of qualities that I think all youngsters are going to need when they leave school today and they leave the education system at either 16 or 18. And um, most schools are not doing that. We're an entirely different jag. We're still on an academic jab. Going to university is the only way forward. Whereas we're producing uh, high courses, uh, high, high pathways of opportunity. For example, as you probably know, a hired apprentice at 18, and we produce a lot of those, and they require only two qualifications. They require an A-level, usually in maths, physics, or chemistry, or life sciences, something like that, uh, not, not a humanitarian A-level. They, 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 um, and I, I'm a historian, so I would not qualify as a hired apprentice these days. But they want just one A-level, not two or three, just one, and also a BTEC extended diploma. They then become highly employable, as I'm sure many of you know this, because you're in this world. Um, and the big companies will pay them uh, 20,000 pounds. Network Rail now pays 23,000 uh, pounds a year. The Navy, which is one of our biggest supporters, because they cannot get enough staff to man the, um, the aircraft carriers, will pay an, uh, an 18 year old from us 32,500 a year. Uh, and it's an enormous benefit to them because they would otherwise have to take in youngsters at 14 and train them for four years. That would cost 100,000. And so they get the great benefit a huge saving, as it were, and we send quite a lot to the Navy. Youngsters who never thought of joining the Navy in their life, including girls, um, uh, because it's a very attractive salary, 32,500. It's, uh, it's, it's higher than many graduates get when they leave at uh, 21 or 22. And at the moment, as you all know, we have a high level of graduate underemployment and graduate unemployment. And so we produce this talent each year. In an individual UTC, the companies that support them will identify themselves individuals they want to apply as an apprentice or take on, and will, or possibly even send on to university at their cost. But there'll be lots of others who don't get uh, appointed that way, and this is why we have employed SpringPod for, what, now three years, I think, we've been doing it, and they are the bridge between our talent and a much wider, broad na uh, nature of, of companies across the country, small as well as large particularly some of the small and medium-sized companies. Uh, and so as a result, we have the best destination data of any schools in the country. Uh, each year in July, we have virtually no, no NEETs, virtually no one, we're down to 1% or something, whereas the average for NEETs in the country is between 8 and 10% of unemployment. Um, and the rest, as I say, go either to become an apprentice at 30%, about 50% university, or the rest get jobs. So that's where I come in, as it were providing STEM talent. And I think a major revolution has to be made in the next 10 years to change the basic curriculum of all our schools to become much more practical. Now, I'm a lone voice saying this, and, uh, but never mind. Uh, it may not happen in my lifetime, but I'm sure that is needed. The improvement of tech education is going to be very key to our economic success in the course of the next 10 years, whoever wins, whichever government forms the country. Absolutely critical.